I want to explain why this is on the agenda, and I also want to make really clear that we're not here tonight as a council to vote on becoming a sanctuary city or not. This is basically an information gathering session. It's what I've always intended it to be. It came about largely as a result of concerned citizens that flooded me with emails basically the Monday after the ill-fated travel ban had gone into effect. A lot of people were watching the news, saw what was happening at the airports. I think a lot of people were moved to just wanted to do something. Um, so what a lot of people did is they sent me emails, and uh, I'm going to read a few of them, just a couple, to give you an idea. Uh, the executive order banning Muslims is a violation of our founding principles and an affront to all those individuals who should be welcomed in this country. I'm writing, therefore, to request that you take steps to make Chapter Town a sanctuary city. Considering the international students at Washington College, our immigrant families living here in the county, and the sentiments of most thoughtful citizens, I believe you find widespread support for such an action. Here's another one in support. I'm writing you requesting you seriously consider making Chestertown a sanctuary city. There are many international students and families at Washington College that would appreciate this. Please give this man your careful consideration. I find it quite ironic that the council and yourself entertain suggestions to make Chestertown safer for residents and visitors by approving pedestrian crosswalks, but would then consider harboring criminal illegal aliens in our community. Federal immigration laws are designed to protect the citizens of this country by refusing to enforce these laws. Sanctuary cities, etc., place all citizens at risk. And I quote, Chestertown doesn't need to be a sanctuary city. You can't even take care of the people that you have. Are you crazy? <laughs> Today we just have one message. It is that we care about our community, immigrant members, and regardless of their status. We want to know we want them to know that they have allies. There are many of us here that support them. Since the newest executive order will expand the program 287G, a program that recruits local police officials to assist with deportations, and as ICE ramps up raids around the country, including in our own community, we turn to you, our local officials and authorities, for an open line of communication. Will you help us maintain the friendly and productive sense of community we all value here in this beautiful part of Maryland. What can we tell our neighbor, families, our friends, and our coworkers who feel the need to leave Kent County out of fear and uncertainty? The order asks that voluntary partnerships be created between federal immigration officers and local law enforcement agencies. Under these agreements, um, state or local authorities would be deputized to arrest or detain people who are suspected of violating immigration laws and to screen the people they arrest and detain using federal databases. Police would detain people so that officers from Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, could pick them up from police custody. Boil down the executive order wants local law enforcement to do ICE's job. It's about the allocation of our scarce local resources. If this part of the order survives court challenges, I would think we should stop to consider whether we want to volunteer the Chestertown Police Department to do the job of enforcing immigration laws. With a warrant, ICE can go wherever they please. And they've been doing that, and they will continue to do that, no matter what happens. But to ask our police and the county sheriff's departments to enforce those laws <coughs> themselves, when it's neither necessary nor required, is to take away valuable time, dollars, and resources from our town and county. We live in a county that was split 50-50 between the left and the right in the last presidential election. So while disagreement is fine, even important in shaping policy and setting the tone in our community, we should reject any argument not grounded in fact and evidence. To perpetuate myths and misinformation, uh, both, I suspect, will be well represented here tonight. I hope I'm wrong, but I think I'm safe in saying that. Does nothing to increase our understanding. We've thrown out some numbers, and I have a few more for you, but in the end, this is about people, hard-working people. I would like to set the record straight on a, a few common myths. Uh, first, we hear that immigrants breed crime. The fact is that studies show that immigration has no effect on crime rates and that immigrants are less likely to commit crimes or be incarcerated than the general U.S. population. Even here in Chestertown is one small example. 
there are 17 registered sex offenders. Of those, 82% are white. 18% are black. It's easy math. None are Hispanic or Latino. Another myth, immigrants don't pay taxes. In fact, collectively, undocumented immigrants paid $10.6 billion to state and local taxes in 2010, the most recent data available. They also contribute to Medicare and provide as much as $7 billion uh, every year to the Social Security coffers. Undocumented workers also pay sales tax, where applicable, and property taxes directly if they own and indirectly if they rent. Another myth, immigrants drain the system. Undocumented immigrants do not qualify for welfare, food stamps, the SNAP program as it should be called, Medicaid and most other public benefits. Most of these programs require proof of legal immigration status and under the 1996 welfare law, even legal immigrants cannot receive these benefits until they've been in the United States for at least five years. So one thing a sanctuary city is not, and this is really to my friends on the left, it, it doesn't mean that we as elected officials actively harbor people that are undocumented and hide them from federal authorities. And it really isn't related to like all the international students at Washington College. I assume if you're taking classes at Washington College, you probably have a visa or some sort of legal documentation. So being a sanctuary city would really have no real bearing, as far as, I, as far as my understanding is, on the students at Washington College. Um, on the right, I would say, I think there's a perception that the word sanctuary means you're just going to let all these undocumented immigrants flood the town and you're going to turn a blind eye to crime if you think the guy's an illegal immigrant. That's also not what it means to be a sanctuary city. Um, a couple surprising facts. Uh, deportations have been going on a lot in the last eight years, actually. If uh, you look at all the U.S. presidents ever, the most deportations that have taken place were under President Obama, actually. It's about 2.6 million people in his eight years were deported. His administration made it uh, a, pop, a uh, preference to target immigrants, undocumented immigrants with criminal histories. So, um, so what, what is a sanctuary city? So in my research, there, the, the two main things that I found that, that sanctuary cities do are, are, are these. The main one is it's almost always a big city, okay, where you have thousands of immigrants, and many of whom probably are undocumented in some way. And what often will happen in those cities is that an undocumented immigrant will get arrested and put in a jail, a city jail, and ICE might contact the city and say, hey, we want to come get this guy, but we need you to hold him for another week or two. Will you do that for us? And a lot of these cities have balked at that for a couple of reasons. One is financially. It's a city taxpayer problem if you are basically acting as a detaining cell for illegal immigrants. It's on your dime to supervise these people. It's on your dime to feed these people. So part of the motivation isn't just moral. It's an economic uh, issue for a lot of these cities. Uh, another way that cities, um, and actually police departments in larger cities, will sometimes have kind of a, a verbal agreement that if they go into, say, a whole uh, section of the community, might be Latino, for example, there's kind of an understanding from the police chief down that they will not inquire about immigration, immigration status because they worry that if these residents see a police car and the first thing they think of is deportation, that those residents will not cooperate with law enforcement. If we were to declare ourselves a sanctuary city, the question is for me is, does that really make sense? Because if, if Chief Baker arrests somebody and it turns out to be an undocumented immigrant and the, the, the charge rises to a level of incarceration, we don't have a Chestertown jail. So that, that person goes to the county detention center, at which point the, any interactions with ICE are really between the county and ICE, not the town of Chestertown. So my fear, and this might disappoint some of the people on the left in this room, many of whom I know voted and supported uh, me, voted for me, if we were to officially declare ourselves a sanctuary city, does that really make sense when we don't have a jail? What I fear that it would do, I think we see it in this room, is it will put a giant spark 
in a powder keg, a very emotional issue where it may potentially not have any real tangible results on the ground and will further divide these <coughs> communities. One of the reasons I'm here is because Chestertown is a member and part of District 36 where we have all our elected uh, delegates and our senator who represent us. Um, I want to thank you, Mayor and, and Town Council, for having us here. This is a great topic. You know, I know you guys were happy to have it here. Um, now, when I found out about it, I started reaching out to all of mine and trying to find out what was going on because, as you said, rumors were going left and right of what's going on. One of the uh, council people said it at the end, sir. You're absolutely correct. We are a nation of laws. Okay? I agree with everyone that talks about immigration, and the only concern I have at this point is illegal immigration. Yeah? I'm grateful for all the citizens who have come from abroad and come to this great country that we all call home. The U.S. Congress adopted in 1996 the Illegal Immigration Reform and Immigration Responsibility Act. Simply put, that act from Congress to state and local jurisdictions says you're, you should not hinder local personnel from relaying information to someone's immigration status to customs. We talked about it. I don't believe there's that issue here. Law enforcement needs to have the tools to do the job. You know, it's a small agency. The sheriff's office is working their hard, and you're right. After um, Chester County PD locks them up, they go to a commissioner. They determine on whether or not they're going to be detained, and then they are sitting in the uh, detention center pending resolution with the judicial system, and after that, ICE files a detainer um, on whether or not to take them to Baltimore or whatever they're going to be doing. Linda hit on a great point. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a financial, whether you like it or not, there's a financial cost to this to everyone who's in here in 36, in Chestertown, in Kent County. Can you break it down for us, please? You know, I wish I could. I I'm unfortunate, sure I, I, <laughs> and I will for you, Tim, okay? I, I will get the numbers, you know, but when I only had a couple days notice, yeah. this this is the best it gets. I, I get to talk. What's this? So, Sanctuary City? Because that's not what we're asking right. for. Well, what we're asking for is for the town council when they're considering everything, There's to no make sure for a sanctuary city. to they make hate. sure that you do not adopt any policy, any ordinance, any directives that would limit enforcement of customs. 